How's it going everyone? Welcome to the channel and welcome to the second update of our travel map collab. If you're not familiar with this project, we've been combining all of our different world travel maps into one big map showing where everybody in our community has been. I made a video about the first few dozen submissions back in February and the response to that was insane. Since then, we've gotten over 200 more submissions to the map. So now we have 277 submissions, which is absolutely insane. The map looks fantastic. We have this whole updated spreadsheet as well. Shout out to Norton for putting this together. He's put in a lot of work to make sure that this project has run smoothly, so huge thank you to him for this. We're gonna look at this spreadsheet in more depth later on in the video, but first I want to show you guys the map itself. In the first video, I just had that static picture of the map that I was using to analyze it, but now we have this really incredible interactive map that Jess Pinko made. Again, a huge, huge shout out to Jess Pinko for putting in so much work to make this map happen. It is fantastic. You guys are gonna be blown away by this thing. So this is the interactive map site. You can see already just how absolutely fantastic the map looks. The website as well with the Chicago flag theming. I love this so much. Before I hop into my analysis of the map, I'm gonna turn it over to Jess Pinko, and he's gonna explain how this map works, all its different functions, all that good stuff. So take it away, Jess Pinko. Hey everybody, if we haven't met before, I'm Jess Pinko, and I've spent the past couple of months putting together this really cool interactive map showing off our community's world travels. What's really cool about this map is that you can use it to pour through the data yourself and derive your own insights beyond what CG shares today. Now there's a lot of features to this map, so I'd like to quickly walk you through how it all works. By default, we see a heat map of world subdivisions using a logarithmic scale for the number of visitors to each. This allows us to better appreciate the differences between smaller numbers than larger ones. If instead we wanted to see this on a linear scale, all we'd have to do is change the scale option in the bottom left options panel. Here we can also change the color scheme and the comparison mode. We'll keep that on subdivisions for now. On the map, we can zoom using the scroll wheel and pan by holding the mouse down. Let's zoom in on Europe. When you hover over a subdivision, you'll see some quick stats show up in the bottom right corner of the map. The hovered subdivision's name, how many people have visited that subdivision, and the most similar other subdivision. We'll talk more about what that means in a moment. Let's select a subdivision. We can either do this by clicking on the map or by using the drop-down menu in the panel below the map. You can even type the name of the subdivision while the drop-down menu is open to navigate to a specific one quickly. Did you notice that the colors on the map changed? When one subdivision is selected, we now see a heat map of common visitors to the selected subdivision. When we select a place like Ile de France, which is where Paris is, the map doesn't appear to change all that much, because Paris is a popular destination for pretty much all world travelers. If instead we select Donegal, Ireland, the map changes quite a bit, since this is a less popular destination that has more commonality with its adjacent subdivisions than any other place abroad. In the bottom panel, we can now also see a list of the people who visited the selected subdivision. Now what happens if we select a second subdivision? If we select Ile de France again, the map suddenly looks very different. We now see a categorical map with three different colors that represent if a subdivision has at least one common visitor with both of the selected subdivisions or else with just one of the two. So for example, we can tell that nobody who's been to both Ile de France and Oosterland, Iceland has been to Donegal, Ireland. I should go on a little trip to change that. In the bottom panel, of course, we also get a visitor list for the second selected subdivision, and my favorite feature of this whole tool, a Venn diagram showing how many visitors are shared versus unique between the two subdivisions. Now if you'll allow me to be a nerd for just a second, I'd like to explain what exactly I mean by most similar subdivision. There are many measures of similarity out there, but the one that's most relevant to this situation is the Jacquard Index. This is basically a measure of how much the intersection of two sets makes up the union of the two sets. In simpler terms, the higher the Jacquard index, the more visitors two places have in common relative to their combined visitor list. So it's a pretty cool map, isn't it? But wait, there's more. If we switch the mode from subdivisions to users, we unlock a whole new world of analysis. In the bottom panel, we can select a user from the drop-down menu. Let's try Jaspinko. Now we can see a map of all the places that I've been. But I already know where I've been, so this isn't all that interesting. Why don't we see how my travels compare to those of CG? We can go ahead and select him from the second drop-down menu. Now that's an interesting map. We can see which places both of us have visited and which places only one of us has visited. And just like in subdivisions mode, we get lists of the places we've been and a Venn diagram quantifying our similarities and differences below the map. Okay, now I think I've covered everything. I hope you have as much fun playing around with this as I did making it. And please feel free to leave any ideas you may have about how to make this even cooler for the future. All right, CG, the floor is yours. 
Thanks for the explanation, Jaspinko, and now let's hop into my analysis. I'm super excited to show you guys all the new stuff here. So first of all, I just want to look at the map itself, show you guys all the new things that we've gotten since the first video. There is a lot more you can see already. First of all, I should note that the most visited subdivision is New York with 165 visitors out of the 277 total. So New York is remaining the most visited. A lot of the earlier patterns we can see in the first video, especially in the US and Europe, you can see they're pretty much the same. The most populated states have been visited the most. One thing that stands out to me now in Canada is we have have Saskatchewan visitors. In the first vid, we had nobody visiting there. Now we have eight people. We also didn't have anybody in the territories, but we have finished all those now, meaning that Canada is completed, which is really cool. Only one Nunavut visitor. But yeah, they, those initial patterns are still holding true. California has a ton. Florida's got a ton. You know, Illinois, Texas. Mexico is looking a lot more fleshed out here. You can see, again, the most visited ones in the first video still standing out here in the Yucatan Peninsula, but a lot more states filled in here as you come down to Central and South America. Again, you can see we're starting to fill it in a bit. It's still a little bit sparse, but it looks way, way better than the first video. I want you guys to go check out this website for yourself, so I won't waste too much time explaining all the different subdivisions. I want to point out some cool ones, though. We have one visitor to Guantanamo in Cuba, which is really crazy. So we can click on Guantanamo here and highlight it. Skipper is the one who visited there. I forget the exact story, but I'm pretty sure it was something with the Coast Guard, like their ship had to divert course or something there. They were at Guantanamo Bay, the U.S. space, and not just this subdivision. So really, really interesting one there. Overall, North and South America is looking pretty nice, especially the U.S. and Canada. These two countries are done amazing stuff there. We do have some Greenland visitors now, Svalbard as well. Europe is looking insane. Almost every subdivision in Europe is filled in now, except for just a handful in the Balkans. Again, much like the first video, you can see that Bayern and Ile de France and London are the biggest subdivision visits here, the most popular spots, it seems. A lot of Italy, Germany, France, Benelux, UK, everything here, just Western Central Europe looks really good. Now when you come out to Central Asia, Russia, and all these things, it looks so much better than the first video. A lot of the stand countries are getting filled in. Interestingly, I don't think we have any Afghanistan visitors, which does make sense. They've been through a lot of turmoil in the last few decades. But on the converse side of that, we have visitors to Aleppo in Syria and a bunch of other places. I believe this was Codemaster and one other person, yeah, who have been here. So that's really interesting. I think that these people were doing some humanitarian work, which is why they ended up here. Really, really cool that they've submitted maps and Codemaster has just insane numbers of visits to places. Heading out to East and South Asia, looking a lot better here as well. India is just about filled in, except for the Eastern parts. Interestingly, we only have one visitor to Bangladesh here, just to die. Aka, who was this? Uh, that was Lunacy Echo, the only Bangladesh visitor. Really interesting to me. But yeah, India's looking good. China, I'm pretty sure, is completed, which is amazing. South Korea looks done as well. Japan is almost there, just missing Akita Yabagata. And then you might notice here in North Korea, we have visitors to Pyongyang and then the border. This was Kabul, so I'm pretty sure they did a little tour in North Korea there. I actually didn't realize we even had a Pyongyang. I thought it was just to the, the DMZ here on the border, but no, Pyongyang too. That's so crazy, man. Indochina is looking pretty good. Philippines, I'm surprised, is a little more sparse than I thought it would be. We have a handful of visitors to the country, but it's not all that extensive across it, which is kind of interesting to me. Indonesia, Sumatra, Java is looking better, these islands, but still nobody to Borneo side or Sulawesi farther east either. Australia and New Zealand are looking pretty nice. I'm pretty sure those two are both completed, which is pretty sick. And then lastly, we come down to Africa here. I think the first thing that jumps out at me is just Egypt, and then everything else is nothing around it. Egypt is looking pretty nice here. Tunisia, Morocco, big tourist spots in North Africa. Uh, West Sub-Saharan Africa is still looking pretty pretty sparse. Just a handful of people coming to like Togo and Nigeria, places like that. A couple out in Senegal. I'm pretty sure the Gambia is completed, which is really cool. Like, you wouldn't expect that to be done. Uh, who is this who's been to the Gambia? Oh, Codemaster, of course. Who else? We have Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda looking pretty nice as well. Coming down to Southern Africa, looking even better. Namibia is complete. South Africa's done as well. Eswatini too, which is pretty cool to me. Lesotho's halfway there. Got some Madagascar visitors. So yeah, Africa's looking a lot better, but it is still the most sparse continent especially in here. Interestingly, still nobody to Antarctica. We've had visitors to North Korea, Guantanamo Bay, but no one's been to Antarctica. Kind of crazy. So that's just about it in terms of what we've added new to the map. It just looks so much more fleshed out. And of course, we are still accepting submissions to the map. If you haven't already submitted, join the Discord server. There's a link on the website and in the description, so make sure to hop in there, submit your maps. Not sure when I'll do another update video, but maybe if we get to 500 submissions or something like that, I can take another look in the summer. What I also want to show is the really cool feature where if you hover over subdivisions, it shows you the most similar one. So the most similar to New York, for example, is New Jersey. Shows that in the bottom right. And then we can also compare it to another subdivision. So let's click on, say, Pennsylvania and compare these two. We can see that of the visitors, 115 have been to both of them. 50 have only been to New York and not PA. But then interestingly, eight people have been to Pennsylvania and not New York. I personally think this Venn diagram feature is really, really cool. It's also just interesting, not even just for like nearby subdivisions, but we can 
compare New York and say Lazio, Italy and see just the overlap there. It's super interesting. I know I've probably said it a few times now, but I just love these features. It's so cool to browse around with this stuff. So when I was browsing around this map on my own time, I did see some interesting ones. If you click on this part of Greenland, the most similar is Aleppo, Syria, and I'm pretty sure that's because of Codemaster. But that's that's just really funny. Like, you wouldn't expect that that's the most similar Aleppo to this part of Greenland, but that's that's the way it happened. So yeah, it's just fun to click on random subdivisions. Let's just click on Xinjiang and then, like, Florida and just see the similarities there. Two people have been to both. That's really cool. As Jasminko mentioned, you can also change it to the user mode, and then you can choose various people's specific maps. So I'll show you guys mine here. It hasn't changed since the first video, but this is my contribution to the map here. Almost all the US, a lot of the UK, Europe, random scattered places in Canada too. It's also pretty nice to see what subdivisions you're missing from the larger group. Everything in dark gray here is in the collab, so I just have not traveled much at all. I should rephrase that as I have traveled a lot, but not around the whole globe, just within Europe and the US really. And then another cool feature is that you can see the most similar user to yourself, so Fraps has been to the most similar places to me, so let's just do a quick comparison here, see what this happens. Similar to the subdivision one, it shows where you've seen both, and just me, or just Framps. We again get the Venn diagram, so we've been to 70 of the same subdivisions. I've been to 74 that Framps hasn't been to, but Framps has been to 39, I haven't been to. All those are in Europe, and then I have a few uniques in Europe as well, and then a lot of North America too. Really cool feature, again guys, go check out this map for yourself. If you submit it already, just choose yourself from the drop down, see who's similar to you, compare yourself to people. When you're scrolling through the list of people, you might see some pretty familiar names. One person that you might want to check out is going to be Rainbow. Rainbow submitted to the map, here he is. You can see his travels in the southern and central US here, as well as his world tour that he's on right now, going around making content. He's been to Europe and then over to Thailand as well, Thailand and Laos. Really awesome to have Rainbow on here. Thank you, Trevor, for submitting to this. He's not the only prominent community member who submitted. You can compare Rainbow's travels to, say, geography challenges if you want. See where they overlap. It's so cool to see this. If you ever wanted to compare your favorite geogist or content creator's travels, this is the website for you. So yeah, scroll through list. Jake Lines. We can compare Jake Lines to GC. Yeah, there's just so many cool people who have submitted to this. Huge thank you to everyone who's contributed. It's so amazing to have this stuff. What have Jake and Rory both been to? A lot of the West US. West, Florida, uh, some parts of France and Italy. Cool. I, I just had no idea. That's really interesting. <laughs> Oh, what else should I show you guys? I guess I'll show you guys Codemaster's map and just show how insane it is. I mean, look at Europe. He's been to every corner of West, Central, South Europe. It, it's just insane. All of Albania, Hungary, like, it's crazy, man. So Codemaster's map is insane, not to mention just the weird different places. Aleppo in Syria. He has also been to the border of North Korea here. That's just insane. I'm so jealous of Codemaster's travels and so many other people who have contributed to this map. That's pretty much all I want to show. I don't want to go through too much. I want you guys to go and explore this map for yourself, so check it out. There's a link in the description. All right, I do want to also show you guys Norton's spreadsheet because he's put a lot of work into this as well. So on the landing page, we have a list of all the completed countries. Again, a lot of smaller ones, but a lot of pretty interesting ones too. We've completed China, as I said. Canada's done Belarus. Like, you would not have expected Belarus to be done, but it is. See, so yeah, a lot of amazing countries completed. How many is this? 80 countries we've completed. That's amazing. In terms of the total subdivision count, that's 2,140. That is 56% of the world completes. So we're getting there. The next Next tab over shows the unique subdivision, so again, Codemaster has been to 56 that nobody else has been to in the world, and a lot of crazy places too. In the first video, I had two unique subdivisions, those sadly are no longer unique. It was Plymouth and Warrington in the UK. I was gonna be pretty surprised if no one else has been there, so yeah, I am no longer having any unique subdivisions. It was nice when it lasted though, so this tab is cool to check out. Next one is all the subdivisions, so this is just a list of every single one in order of most to least, so New York has 165, that's the most. The next tab over shows the total subdivision count that each person has been to, so I've been to 144 total, which I'm actually pretty happy with. And now I'm actually right next to Geography Challenges. That's very fitting. GC, CG next to each other. That's cool. This next tab shows people who have completed an entire country. Codemaster has been to every subdivision in 18 countries. That is crazy. Double the next most would just Meatloaf, another well-traveled person. Sadly, I don't think I'm on this list either. I haven't been to every subdivision. My closest is for sure the US. I'm only missing Vermont, Alaska, Hawaii. My goal is to get those done in the next three years. I would love to go to Vermont this year. That's my that's my plan right now. So we'll see how I'll make that happen. And then the last tab on the spreadsheet is unique country visits. So these are people who are the only ones who have been to these countries. Shaluti leads here with 
five. All right, well, that's pretty much all I've got for you guys here. Again, go check out the map and the spreadsheet for yourselves. They're both going to be linked in the description. Again, a massive, massive thank you to Jess Binko and Norton for putting all this together. You guys are so incredible. Shout out as well to Jadu who came up with this original idea and who has been helping us with the process along the way. And of course, a huge thank you to everyone who submitted to this collab. It's amazing to have this data and it all visualized like this. Super, super cool. Again, submissions are still open. Hop in Discord, submit them. We'd love to get up to 500 and beyond. Well, again, that's about it for me. Thanks for watching this video and I will catch you guys next time.